Chapter 27 Jeremy finds himself in a familiar concrete room. Both the table in front of him and the chair he sits upon are so cold on his hands and arms that he doesn't let either steel object come into contact with his bare skin. Folders lay spread out all across the table just before his eyes. Without anyone saying a word, he knows exactly what's coming up next. More accusations, more fighting, and more photographs of his dead friends he'll be forced to view. Jeremy wishes he could just leave, not having to bear this burden once again. Detective Forrest sits across the table, staring at Jeremy while his new partner stands away from the table, his arms crossed with a folder in one hand as he leans into a corner where the two walls meet. There he stays with his face hidden in the shadows. Okay, Jeremy, we've been here before, Forrest begins. I don't know what to say to you. Everything we have found so far, fingerprints, hair, DNA, it all points to you. Forrest stands and walks around the table and over to where Jeremy sits. Placing his hand on Jeremy's shoulder with a firm grip, he leans in really close. Jeremy, as far as all the evidence is concerned, you are as good as guilty. He stands straight, walks over to his partner in the corner, and is handed a folder. Shuffling through the massive folder for a minute, searching for God knows what, he finally pulls out a thinner folder from within. After returning the massive folder to his partner, he steps back to the table and finds his seat across from Jeremy. This folder contains the photos of the Alan Salo murder scene, Forrest says as he lays the folder on the table. Placing his hands with fingers interlaced on the table in front of him, he leans in over the tabletop and sighs heavily. Jeremy, I don't know why, but I believe you didn't do this. Or at least, I believe you believe you didn't do this. But I also believe you know more than you're willing to say. He opens the folder and spreads out the photographs across the table. Jeremy doesn't look at the photo. He focuses instead on the outline of Forrest's partner standing in the darkness of the corner. He hasn't left since they had originally entered the room. Must be a trick of the light, but Jeremy believes he can see the man's eyes glowing back at him sinisterly. It also seems his family doesn't seem to think you are responsible for this either. Forrest draws Jeremy's attention back to him and his brother and father have offered to be character witnesses on your behalf when this goes to trial. When? Jamie repeats the word in a surprised manner. Yes, Forrest answers back. We have enough evidence now to move past the if stage, and the higher-ups want to push this to trial as soon as possible. He continues as he fingers his way through some paperwork from the same folder as the photos. Closing his eyes, Jeremy struggles to breathe. Everything in him tightens up as he feels he may be on the verge of some sort of anxiety attack. Dropping the folder on the table in a huff, Forrest stands up and walks back over to Jeremy's side of the table. Jeremy, visibly terrified, just sits there quietly as he paces his breathing pattern back to normal. Having family members of one of the victims would be good for you. I won't deny that at all. However, what would be best is for you to give us all the information you have. Just tell me all you know about every single one of these events. Jeremy doesn't say anything. He doesn't even look up at him. Come on, Jeremy. Anything at all that could be helpful to us in investigating every possible angle will be in your favor. But again, Jeremy says nothing. Forrest becomes frustrated and decides it's best to end his good cop act. After walking back around to the other side of the table, he sits in his chair, leans back, and smiles at Jeremy. Look, kid, I'm going to be straight with you. Dr. Stephen Donis is still missing, and I'm willing to bet he's no longer amongst the living. Jeremy clenches his eyes tightly and lowers his head a little. His fists close tightly, and he sets them pinkies down on the top of the table. I'm also willing to bet you know where his body is, Forrest continues. Jeremy's eyes open as Forrest begins to lean heavily across the table and sees a comically large grin smeared on with evil intent upon his face. Don't you? He hisses out at Jeremy. No! Jeremy screams as he slams his fist to the tabletop savagely. 
Dropping his face to the table, tears begin to stream from his face and puddle on the steel surface below him. A single degree colder on the surface of the table, and the tears may have frozen to his face. Forrest leans forward even further and stares at Jeremy while his face hovers only inches away from the boys. Well, if you didn't do it, then tell me, who did? Forrest asks. Tell me what happened to Stephen Donis, he calls out. Or who killed Wilt Cannon, he continues. Or Alan Salo, he yells out as he slams his fist down on the photos laid out before Jeremy. The shock of Forrest's connection with the table causes Jeremy's eyes to jet open and his head to rise from the table. As Jeremy's gaze slowly rises, his eyes meet the photo staring back at him on the table. His heart stops beating for a moment as he sees AJ's kitchen door covered in blood and he realizes it's the same as his dream. How could he have dreamt what had happened? There's no way he could have just had a dream that was coincidentally the same scene for having seen the photos. This was no coincidence, and he knows he can no longer deny, on any level, the relationship between the dreams and the murders. Well, Forrest asks again, his voice raised even louder, with the veins in his forehead and neck pulsing, looking as though they could burst through his skin at any second. The dreams! Jeremy shouts. The dreams are killing people! He screams out, knowing full well what it would lead to, knowing there was no way Forrest or anyone else, for that matter, would dare, no, could dare to believe him. Damn it, kid! Forrest answers back. If you're not going to tell us anything, you can just rot in holding until we need you again. He looks up at his partner, take him to the holding cells, and have him sit there until he has something useful to tell us. The officer picks Jeremy up out of the chair and drags him out of the room. There's no struggle this time. Jeremy doesn't say a word. He just goes on feeling the guilt of their deaths deep within himself. They leave the room, the door slams shut behind him. Forrest covers his face with his palms, letting out a large sigh. He runs his hands down his face, stretching his skin toward his chin. He leans back in his chair and stares upward toward the dark and empty ceiling above the light hanging in the middle of the room. I hate playing the bad cop. Thank you for listening. If you're enjoying the story and how it's going, please subscribe so you can get every chapter as it comes through. Discuss in the comments, plot threads, and where you think the story's going. Share with anybody you think might find it interesting. Until then, I'll see you next video.